Today we're going to start looking at chapter three, lesson two, how the elements are organized into the periodic table. Before we begin today's lesson, you should probably pause, go back and make sure that you've looked on Friday's module from Friday the 13th and make sure that you have completed and submitted the chapter three, lesson one worksheet before you go on with today's lesson so that you don't get too far behind. We're going to cover the first part of the lesson today. We'll cover the next part tomorrow, and then you will have a worksheet tomorrow over this lesson. So that gives you a little bit of time, but you do need to complete the chapter three, lesson one worksheet and get that submitted. So today we're going to look at how the periodic table came about, how it came into being. You see it in every science room, probably, um, you know, all over the place. And we can credit this person who is Dmitry Mendeleev as the person who uh, is given credit for creating the first version of the periodic table back in 1869. By this time, by about 1869, a total of 63 elements had been discovered. A few of them were gases, there were a few liquids, most were the solid metals, and they were already beginning to see the properties that these elements had. And the scientists wondered if those properties of the elements would follow some sort of pattern. And it was Mendeleev who discovered the set of patterns that apply to all of the elements that we see on the periodic table. He knew that some of the elements already had similar characteristics, both chemical and physical. He knew that you know silver and copper were both shiny metals. So he thought that these similarities were part of a hidden clue or hidden pattern as to how, how these elements could be arranged. And in order to find that pattern, he began to write down um, things like the melting point, the density, the color, and he put these on individual cards, almost like index cards, and then began to lay them out on the table by several different methods. And what he found is our key sentence, that he noticed that a pattern of properties appeared when he arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic mass. And he found that those properties repeated in regular patterns. We can kind of see that here in this picture. Um, we are looking at lithium, sodium, and potassium. Notice what happens to their um, atomic mass numbers. Lithium is seven, sodium is 23, potassium is 39. You can also notice what happens to the reactions of each of these and how they increase. So if I were to ask you which one of these has a greater reaction or greater reactivity with water, you would say which one? Potassium. Potassium, you can see in this picture, is reacting um, much greater with the water than what the lithium is. And then also based on that, can you make a correlation between how reactive an element is with its atomic mass number? Potassium is more reactive. It also has a higher mass number. So this is what set up um, a pattern of characteristics that Mendeleev noticed and began to put into the very first periodic table. And here is what the very first periodic table looked like. He arranged these cards to create the first periodic table, which is an arrangement of elements showing the repeating pattern of their properties. Periodic literally means in a regular repeating pattern. So this is what the first periodic table looked like. Now, going back to the example we just talked about, you will see that here is sodium, here is potassium, whoops, and here is lithium. So again, we notice that potassium is the one that had the greater reactivity, and we can see that 
the mass number increases as you go down, so potassium had a higher reactivity than what lithium does. So this is what the very, very first periodic table looked like. And he left blanks in the periodic table. You'll notice that here is a blank. So instead of just filling in what he found as he went along, he was actually thinking ahead of the game. And he was saying that if we have an element that has certain properties and we find another element that has certain properties that are a little bit higher numbers, there has to be something that's in the middle. There has to be something between those two. So he actually predicted um, some of these elements' existence before they were ever found. He actually said that we must expect the discovery of many yet unknown elements. For example, elements that are similar to aluminum and silicon, whose atomic weight would have to be between 65 and 75. So based on what he found and what he was seeing as far as patterns, he actually um, predicted that elements would be found in the future that would fall into these categories and complete the periodic table as we know it. Let's look at some of the important information that is found on the periodic table. Now tomorrow we're going to delve more into the periodic table and start looking at things specifically, but let's just look at sort of three real important things as far as the periodic table goes. First of all, when you look at a box on the periodic table, you will notice that it looks like this, and you will find three important things. In the top of the box, you will find a number. That number is what we call the atomic number. That number tells you the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. So the atomic number equals the number of protons. I would say write this information in your book in the upper right hand corner if you have it because you will be referring to this quite a bit as we move forward working with the periodic table. So the atomic number is that number that is in the upper right hand corner of the box in the periodic table and the atomic number tells us the number of protons. Now from Friday's lesson we also know that the number of protons is equal to the number of what? Electrons. So the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So even though the atomic number directly tells us the number of protons, it also tells us the number of electrons. Also on the box we will see the symbol that represents the name of the element. So that is the chemical symbol. It just contains one or two letters that represents what that chemical is. Oftentimes it's English, so it makes sense. Um, for example, let's see, carbon is C, oxygen is O, fluorine is F. But sometimes uh, they, they're not, they don't make sense. So we have iron is FE. That's because it stands for the Greek language from when they um, when they name them, or the Latin names, I'm sorry, um, stands for the Latin. So ferros is for iron. So sometimes they make sense, sometimes they're sort of random letters that don't seem to make sense, but it's because um, that it's for their Latin names from when they were discovered. And then lastly, at the bottom, we have a number, and this number represents the atomic mass number. The atomic mass number um, is the mass of the entire atom, and it is an average. That's why we get a decimal point. But as we work with these numbers later on, we will uh, just round. So for this example, 39.098, we would just say 39. If it was 39.9, we would say 40. We're going to use whole numbers. Since it's the atomic mass, it's telling us the mass of the atom, and since electrons are very negligible in their size, basically the atomic mass number is equal to the number of protons plus 
the number of neutrons. So that's why I want you to kind of write these things up here because as we start to work with these, you'll have to refer back to these until you get used to it. But the atomic number, the number in the top right of the box, tells you the number of protons and it also tells you the number of electrons since they are the same. The mass number tells you the number of protons plus neutrons. So knowing that then, if you take the bottom number, subtract the top number, that will tell you the number of neutrons in the atom. Let's take a look at a few of these and see what I'm talking about. This periodic table that I'm putting up here is not the one that is in your book. I couldn't get yours onto one page and I wanted it to be the complete periodic table as I talked about it. Um, so let's just look at one of these. Let's look at carbon. So let's look at carbon right here. So as we look at carbon, we know that the atomic number is what? The atomic number is six. Knowing that, there are how many protons? Six. Since the number of protons and electrons are the same, there are how many electrons? Six. And to find the number of neutrons, you just simply take the mass number at the bottom, subtract the atomic number at the top to get the number of neutrons. So neutrons, there are also six. Let's erase these and do another one. All right, let's look at, um, let's do phosphorus. So we look at phosphorus. The atomic number is the top number, which is 15. Since the atomic number tells us the number of protons, there are how many protons? 15. Since protons always equal electrons, there are also 15 electrons. We take the mass number at the bottom, subtract the number at the top to get the number of neutrons. So neutrons would equal 16. While I am erasing this, why don't you do chlorine? Come up with the atomic number, the number of protons, the number of electrons, and the number of neutrons for chlorine. The atomic number is 17, therefore there are 17 protons, 17 electrons. Calculate the number of neutrons, so it would be 35 minus 17 would be 18. All right, let's do a couple more. I would like for you to do manganese. Calculate the atomic number, the number of protons, the number of electrons, the number of neutrons.
And now let's do silver. And let's do one last one. Let's choose Xenon. Okay, so hopefully after today's lesson, you can look at the periodic table, identify the atomic number, identify the symbol and the name, and find the atomic mass number. Using those numbers, you should be able to calculate the number of protons, the number of electrons, and the number of neutrons for any element on the periodic table. We will look more in detail at the periodic table tomorrow and you will have a worksheet tomorrow over this lesson. Have a great rest of your day. See you tomorrow.